What's up guys? It's Mark again with Better at Beach and today we have the honor of working with Isaac Newbel. And if you want to find him on Instagram, it's Torque VB. Just working with you once, I know you're a swing specialist, a biomechanics genius, but just seeing you get to work with my partner, I applied what you were showing him. And in warm-ups, I was hitting two times harder than I have been with my hardest swing for the last few weeks. And it was all about the activation of a different muscle and thinking about sequencing in a different way. So if you could explain to our audience like what they were trying to, what you were getting us to do. So most volleyball players and most kind of throwing athletes out there, one of the, the main muscles that we have to focus on and that athletes forget to focus on is actually the muscles that are behind the shoulder. So one of the most important muscles to activate during the swing is actually called the rhomboid. Now, if we take a look at Mark here, the rhomboid is right on the other side of the scapula and its job is to retract the scapula. So what happens is the scapula actually gets pulled back towards the spine. When that happens, it pulls or it holds our hitting arm or throwing arm much further behind us. So not only is it keeping are hitting or throwing arm behind the body, but it's starting to expand the front part of the chest. Now, during the swing, our goal is to stretch the internal rotators of the shoulder. Now, most people, when they get it wrong, are actually trying to drive power from the shoulder itself. So what ends up happening is there is no stretch, there is no activation back here, and there's actually a conscious shortening or pushing of those muscles forward. So that's when he's trying to drive power from the wrong location. So in the swing, we're actually activating the oblique, more specifically for a right-hander, it's that left oblique. So the torso is always gonna be our engine. When that happens, if the shoulder joint is properly loose and relaxed, and that rhomboid is activated, it will send the forearm backwards. That's called external rotation of the shoulder joint. And what happens is we get a nice eccentric loading or a stretching of those internal rotators. That's how those muscles will stretch just like rubber bands and they will explode forward basically without the need for any sort of activation from the shoulder. And so kind of what Mark was talking about was an effortless swing and that just happens because he's allowing his own physiology of the muscles to do the work for him, right? And so that's the kind of stuff that we look for when we're coaching athletes and when we're training big hitters. It's interesting as, as a coach because I've been working a lot with people's arm swings. And I've said the things that you have said, but in different ways, and sometimes they don't work. And in my own career, they haven't worked as well, where we want to open. So when he's talking about activating this, I always thought about stretching the chest. Now over time, once I start stretching the chest, I can stretch my chest without actually activating this rhomboid. And so then I was just getting open wider and my swing was coming through slower. Today, as soon as I started activating instead of stretching, right, I activated and that does give me a little bit of a stretch, I started hitting harder immediately with, with no effort. So I think if you're thinking about a big open chest, that can be a good key, but for me, it doesn't activate my rhomboid. Mm -hmm. So I can't think about a stretch chest. I gotta think about it cocking back that rhomboid and really making sure that I get the stretch out of that. So, um, and it's isolating, it's isolating that rhomboid. Mm. Right? The isolation is the tough part. So a lot of people, when we talk about scapula activation or rhomboid activation, they tend to tense up the shoulder joint and the rhomboid at the same time, and then the shoulder is stiff. So the shoulder still has to be loose and relaxed to rotate freely, but that rhomboid needs to be activated so that it's holding this limb further back behind me in a position to stretch out those internal rotators. I don't want you to think of changing anything with your takeoff, right? So if you start to hit line, you already start to angle your feet even more. So again, if I'm a, a decent blocker, so I want you to just go the exact same way as if you were hitting angle every time. So instead of thinking, open your feet more, 
we're just going to activate the left oblique to push you back okay. so that the Makes hips sense. stay yeah. closed. Pinch, the heavy pinch starts to happen right as that uh, forearm starts to pick up right about to vertical. And then that pinch and the activation from here happens. So getting the synchronization of that right is hard, okay. right? And it takes a lot of time. But as you synchronize more and more, right? So there's an activation here, right? That energy forces the forearm back. That's your counter motion. So as I rotate the torso forward, Shoulders should go the opposite direction, right? Yeah. And that's how I get that stretch. And the more you hold, the more stretch you get. I feel like my traps activate a little bit, which maybe they shouldn't, but when I stay high, the trap gets involved you'll, you'll a feel little that. bit. When I go down, they're dead. Some of the things that you would do in indoor, you can still kind of do out here. So the, the left foot is a really important step in our approach, right? That's where you load. That's where a lot of timing happens too. So the better you get at loading on the left and reading the set, then you can make those tiny little adjustments that are so, so critical to getting yourself to the ball or even okay. speeding up. Because remember, if you, it's the same idea as what we've been talking about this whole time. When you load, there's actually stretching occurring, right? So you're loaded, boom, and you can fire quicker. Right, instead of kind of just brushing through the step. If I'm waiting, it's more, you're, you're trying to load on your left Okay. So remember, it's always about how fast, right? So sometimes when we think about trying to jump hard, we tend to try to load more, right, to get up. But try to think about the speed, right? Of what I'm, exactly, I'm trying to get it quick, right? Really quick. I think I'm going in too hard and then it's like a little bit off so I slow myself down. things that will allow you to even pull is going to be the speed of your arms okay yeah if they I are too slow that. you will lose time okay you will not have any time to pull so the arms on, right are the same on double arm you both have pretty good double arm lifts they should be totally relaxed and the torso right you're basically turning them into pendulum right the faster that is the more time i'm going to have to actually pull I think my, since my arms were faster, I got here quicker, but I didn't necessarily get, start pulling my arm back. Remember that if you, say you're, you're early, right? So that's when you're gonna see the forearm kind of go at horizontal to the ground. Yeah. So you're just lagging it, right? Yeah. And then a whip, yeah. right? So the, it's just like a pitcher, pitchers will drop and then they'll go, right? So they're just lagging it as long as they can. So there's more momentum into external. I don't do it, I end up getting like out this rather than like that because then there's no rotation behind my head. Yeah, it's all just like there, yeah. and then there's you lose a bunch of power, right? Or all power, yeah. As an outside, right, playing indoor, we usually are taught, even on the beach, right, you face one way and you hit the other. Yeah. So as you, you probably don't, I don't know if you do it that often, but do you ever rotate towards the line and do you ever go back the other way? Because yeah, I haven't no, seen because that. because I feel like I don't hit hard enough. 
going forward. So if I were to turn away and take another like 5% off. But try to remember though, it's our natural swing is to pronate. Okay. Right? So this is this is still a natural part of the motion. And you are getting the body through. Okay. Right? But if you go this direction and you try to go too far, you're not gonna get anything. But again, cuts are fine too. Right? We're just talking about power. And that's kind of like a perfect example right there. Where did the set go? Yeah. Flew over a little bit and then you can change direction. Huh. Look at how quick I got it back. Thank you so much. Of course, my pleasure. pleasure. Appreciate it. Had a find him on Instagram. Hit him up. Very good. You have a Thank YouTube you very channel? Much. YouTube channel, Torque VB as well. Go find him, subscribe, and subscribe to his Instagram. Take it easy.